All right, warm ups day one. It's uh, December eighth, Tuesday. Uh, if you're at home watching these, press pause and give them a try. Your test is open note, open calculator. So make sure, so part of this is just identifying where in your notes this stuff is, so it doesn't take you forever uh, on test day to locate what you need. All right, let's go over these. So arithmetic or geometric? Geometric, because we are multiplying. What are we multiplying by each time, Abby? Four. Four. Yes, it's geometric because it has a common ratio of four. All right, the formula for a n. You may need to look it up, but you may have done it enough to kind of be familiar with it. We always start with the first term. And then arithmetic, we would add. Geometric, we're going to multiply by 4. And this is that n minus 1 thing because we're already at the first step. If we want to get to the second term, we multiply once. If we want to get to the eighth term, we multiply 7 times. So that n minus 1 thing. Or you just look in your notes and, and trust it. A7, I will use the formula that we just came up with. 3 times 4 to the 7 minus 1. So, yeah, that's going to be a big number. 3 times 4 to the 6th is 12,288. First time I've done this problem. Is that what y'all got? Give me some. Okay. Some formula. Uh, be careful, we have three sum formulas, and so that's another tricky part of this, is make sure you pick the right one. Um, so make sure you pick the geometric formula for n terms, as opposed to the geometric formula for infinite terms. So let me write this one, and then we'll write all of them uh, as kind of a review. So this one is a1, 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So first term was 3, 1 minus 4 to the 10th, because we're doing 10 terms, over 1 minus 4. Uh, also remember, be careful when r is negative or a fraction. you got to really be careful with parentheses and subtracting. This one's pretty straightforward, so we'll be okay. 3 times 1 minus 4 to the 10th divided by 1 minus 4. Put it on the, you can see it there. Uh, careful with the, the fraction stuff. Um, I could have used the fraction bar as well. So 1 million, I think I heard somebody say that number. 1 million 48,575. Huge number, but think about what we did. We were multiplying by 4 10 times, so that's going to get really, really big. And then we add up all those numbers, so it makes sense that we'd have uh, a big number there. Okay, somebody asked about the other sum formulas. So that's geometric. Arithmetic is n times a1 plus a n over 2. And then infinite geometric is a1 over 1 minus r. So three sum formulas, be careful when you use each one. So two of them are geometric, and one of them is arithmetic. This one was the infinite sum. Uh, and I feel compelled to write r is less than 1, because that's the only time you can use that sum. So be careful. Those are your three sum formulas. Make sure you're using the correct one in whatever problem you're looking at. All right, part two of one of them. So another set of questions given a series or sequence. So if you're watching at home, press pause, give those a try, and then come back and join us, and we'll go over them. All right, again, test-inspired. Um, first eight or nine questions on the test look exactly like these. You know, numbers change to protect the innocent, but... Same type stuff. Um, this time we're going down by 6, like subtracting 6. So that sounds like arithmetic, where the common difference is negative 6. So 
So a sub n is the first term plus negative 6 times n minus 1. Or some of you just wrote minus 6 times n minus 1. That was OK. Um, the, the test asks for a simplified formula. You don't have to give the simplified formula. You can, you can leave it um, as that. But the simplified formula would be minus 6n plus 6, so 19 minus 6n. But I'm OK with either one of those. Uh, this one's simplified. But this one's kind of nice because you can tell what the first term is and tell what d is pretty easily. So I'm OK with either one of those. So whichever one you, you prefer is fine. A6 means I'll just plug in the 6 for the formula to the formula. Um, and I, even though I have a simplified version, it makes more sense in my mind to use the, the original because I've started the first term and I'm going to subtract 6 five times. Yeah, start at 13 and subtract 6 five times. And I get negative 17. Sum formula. Be careful. Make sure you use the right sum formula. This is arithmetic. So that's n times first term plus last term all over 2. So 25 terms. First term is 13. Uh, the last term. So this this forces me to do an extra problem here. I've got to go figure out what the what the twenty fifth term is so that I can plug it into my equation. Thirteen minus six times twenty four is negative one thirty one. Okay, now I'm ready to use the equation. Just typing it into the calculator. And I think I saw this on some pages. Negative 1475 for the sum. And again, as we've mentioned before, if you absolutely get stuck on these, you could kind of go the long way around. That's not really preferred. But if you get stuck and you can't come up with anything else, the sixth term, that wouldn't be too bad to get there on your own. Minus 6 would be negative 11. Minus 6 would be negative 17. So there's the 6 term. So that's a that's an easy way to get there, or kind of easy way to get there anyway. Now the sum of the first 25 terms, that would not be so easy because you'd have to keep writing these out and not mess one up until you got to the... I'm about to mess one up just talking about it here. You'd have to just keep going until you got to the 25th term and then manually add them up. So, you know, that's not generally a good way to go. And that's why on the test we'll ask for, for sums that are far enough out there where if you're going to go the long way, it's really going to, it's going to be annoying. So some of them you can check by hand. Others you could, but it's just not practical um, to write out 25 terms and add them up. Uh, if you do get stuck trying to, to do something the long way by hand to check or whatever, save that for the end. Make sure you have time. Um, and you may want to do it on a couple of them just to kind of convince yourself that you're on the right track. And that's fine. But don't be doing that stuff during the test where you might run out of time. So, you know, if, if you want to do that, put a star next to that one, work the rest of the test, and then come back and write out 25 terms and add them up by hand if you really, really need to do that. All right, so today is review, tomorrow's review. We'll, I'll post some more warm-ups tomorrow that are also test-inspired. Um, and then the test will be uh, on Thursday. And I will post it online for you online people to, uh, to enjoy on Thursday.